Um, unlike the previous labs where we were focused on specific tissues, th this is the first lab where we are going to be observing a whole organ. Um, it turns out the skin is an organ. It's the largest and fastest growing organ in the body. Um, and because it's an organ, it's going to be composed of really all the different tissue types. Um, and so today we're going to be seeing examples of epithelial tissue, um, a few of the connected tissues that should be familiar at this point, but also nervous tissue as well as muscle tissue that are going to help contribute to the overall function of the skin. Um, the, the thing to point out here in this first slide, um, first off is just to orient yourself. The skin is going to be made up of two large regions. The first region is from this line right here out to the surface. And this is referred to as the epidermis. Um, and the epidermis is an example of keratinized stratified squamous ET. So we, we observed in the esophagus earlier the non-keratinized version, um, and that was again stratified. We have several layers, squamous, these cells on the surface, just like in the esophagus, are very, very thin. The difference here is these are keratinized, um, and what that means is these cells have, have acquired over time this particular protein called keratin, as well as some other molecules that give it a nice waterproof uh, um, property. And, and so in the case of the keratinized stratified squamous of our skin, this outer region is dead, um, but really, really protective. That was not the case in the esophagus or other areas that have the non-keratinized form. And so we're going to be looking more closely at this and describing several sub-layers that we find within this epidermis. Below the epidermis then is the other or second region of the skin, and this is referred to as the dermis. Um, and so we, we should be familiar with the dermis. This was a really nice example of our dense irregular connective tissue we observed last time. Um, so we'll take a closer look at this, not so much for the types of tissues, because we've already done that, but really for some of the accessory structures that we find in this region, hair and, and sweat glands in particular. And so we'll look at this in a moment. And then finally, there's this other region down here, which is technically not part of the skin, um, but, is, but is often uh, kind of taught along with it. And this is the hypodermis. Um, the hypodermis is typically composed of loose areolar CT, or in this field of view, a lot of adipose tissue. Um, and so we, in fact, used a uh, skin slide as an example of adipose tissue, and you were, you were hopefully going to find some down in this area. And so if we, if we quickly move through this next slide, really the point here is just to emphasize that, that we're going to focus on this region here. This is the, the epidermis, or this the stratified epithelial layer. And if we take a much closer view of this, here we can see that, this being the basic basal layer and out to the surface, that the, the cells begin to take on a different appearance and they're not all consistent. Um, and, and it turns out that there are different layers or strata um, defined within this one epidermis. And so in the case of thick skin, there are different types of skin. There's thick skin, which is thick. We find it on sort of palms of our hands or the, or the soles of our feet. In the case of thick skin, which this is, there should be five layers, uh, four of which are really obvious in this field of view that I'll go through. Um, in thin skin, which would be the skin mostly everywhere else on the body, um, there, there are fewer layers, and I'll mention that here in a moment. But if we just look at this one for an example, and we start at the bottom here. This layer, if we, if we could, if we could have even a higher magnification, is where the basement membrane would be. This is where the epithelial tissue is connecting with the supportive connective tissue down below. And so this most basal layer, so this layer along this, this, this basal surface, is referred to as a stratum basally. It's, it's the basal layer. And this one layer of cells here is where the new layers are forming. This is the metabolically and mitotically active cell layer. So this cell layer down here, the stratum basally, is the one that's rapidly dividing and over time replacing and regenerating and pushing cells up as they move towards the surface. And so if we think about it, all the cells that make up our epidermis come from this layer and over time are pushed up towards the surface and it's during this process that they acquire this keratin and these properties associated with the surface of our skin. And so the first layer is the stratum basally. It's this one cell layer down here that we associate with rapid cell division. The next cell layer begins about here and, and goes to maybe about right here. And you'll notice this cell layer, if you have to look very closely, that these cells almost appear prickly um, 
or spiny. You can see these very narrow spines along there. Um, and those spines represent dysmosomes. Those spines represent those anchoring junctions that, that we talked about in lecture that are so critical for holding epithelial cells together. And so the idea here, and you could disagree with me, is, is these have a spiny appearance. And so this second layer is referred to as the stratum spinosum. And so this may be composed of you know, 10, 20 cell layers, but this whole region is referred to as a stratum spinosum. And again, that name is given for this appearance of this kind of prickly or spininess. As we continue to move up, we then move into our third layer. And this right here, maybe three, four, five cell layers thick, is referred to as the spinal spinum, uh, sorry, stratum spine, uh, sorry, stratum granulosum. Um, the, the stratum granulosum is a layer or several layers of cells that have now acquired these granules. And so the, the name granulosum is, is associated with how they appear under the scope. And these granules are going to be referred to as pre-keratin. And so it's not quite the keratin that we associate with the surface, but it's this sort of immature um, keratin that is slowly becoming more mature. And, and so this, this granulosum layer tends to be really easy to see because it's darker stained than the layer below it and definitely the layer above it. Um, and so as we continue to move out, at this point, these cells have reached a state of functionality that requires them to be dead. They lack organelles, they lack nuclei, and they really be just come filled with this keratin and these other you know, water repellent molecules. And so there is technically a very thin layer here. It's not apparent in this field of view. It'll be apparent in the next slide. And this layer or clear layer, again, not well seen here, is called the stratum lucidum. And that's, that's only found in thick skin. And so again, I'll show it to you in a moment here. But realistically, this view here shows the outermost layer, the fifth layer really well. And this outermost layer is referred to as the stratum corneum. And this can be a very thick layer. These are the cells that you would touch on the surface of your skin. These are the dead cells. You can see no nuclei. You really can't see any pigments or organelles inside. These are really nice water repellent cells that, that, that serve the function of protecting the, the tissues below it. Um, and so again, in thick skin, there are five layers. Here's a different view of a different slide. And, and the, the reason I want to show you this is because it shows this fifth or this other layer, the stratum lucidum, fairly well. You'll notice that the granulosum layer, those granule-filled cells, really dark pigmentation. Just outside that, if this is thick skin, and this is absolutely thick, thick skin, there may be, this field of view shows one, a very thin layer that seems to lack pigment. And this is the stratum lucidum, this fourth layer. And then outside that is we see the stratum corneum. And so everything from here out, that's the epidermis, the epithelial layer. Um, the other thing that this, field, this view shows really well is that the epidermis will extend down. You'll notice that this area right here, this is almost like an epidermal projection down. And along with that, you have these finger-like projections of the dermis up. And these finger-like projections of the dermis are referred to as dermal papillae, or finger-like projections. And so the dermis, if we move our attention down, is going to be made up of two regions. The superficial region, the area that contains the dermal papillae, fingers, is referred to as the pap papillary layer. And then the layer down below is going to be referred to as the reticular layer. And so the dermis has these two broad regions. There's the papillary layer containing these dermal papillae. This tends to be loose areolar CT. And then down below we have the papillary, I'm sorry, the reticular layer. And this is the nice example of dense irregular we saw last time. Here's another view, kind of showing the same thing. We can see these dermal papillae, these finger-like projections of the papillary layer. And then down below we have the reticular layer of the dermis, really nice example of dense irregular CT. The other thing that, that I wanted to point out using this slide is, you'll notice here at the very tip of these fingers, there's one here, there's one here, there's probably one over there. These, these structures that seem to be a dis different tissue type. I'm gonna show you the next slide, which is a much, much higher magnification of the, really the same structure. These structures are referred to as Meissner's corpuscles. These are types of sensory neurons or sensory receptors. 
And, and so at the very tip of these dermal papillae, we have these Meissner's corpuscles, and these are, are involved in light touch. We tend to have a lot of them at the tips of our fingers and maybe the soles of our feet. So here's our first example of nervous tissue within this organ, the skin. And so up in the tips of the dermal papillae, we find structures referred to as Meissner's corpuscles, and these are involved in light touch. The other type of sensory receptor that you're expected to be able to see in the histology slides in lab are present in this field of view. Now, just to kind of orient yourself here, this is the very top. You can see some of these, these extensions of the epidermis. Here would be the papillary region of the dermis, and then now the reticular layer of the dermis. And you'll notice here, deep down in the dermis, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. They almost look like sliced onions. These large sliced onion-like structures would be the second type of sensory receptor you need to know, and these are referred to as Pacinian corpuscles. Um, Pacinian corpuscles are involved in deep touch, and so the fact that these are deep down in the dermis as opposed to the very tips of the papillary region where we saw the Meissner's corpuscles, um, suggests that these require much, much, much deeper touch pressure to activate them. So touch receptors, but deep pressure deep down in the dermis and even extending down into the hypodermis. So those are the two sensory receptors you need to be familiar with when it comes to lab. The other thing that you can see in this field of view that we'll look closely at are these structures here. So there's some here, there's some here. Looks like some over here. These structures turn out to be sweat glands. And, and these sweat glands, when we look closely at them, are, are going to have kind of your, your classic uh, tightly packed cells. There's not really obvious free surface here. They almost look spiral in shape. And then associated with them would be these ducts. So this should look like glandular ET that we saw in the salivary glands. Um, these are sweat glands. And specifically, these ones that do not have an obvious lumen or inner tube area, these are referred to as merocrine glands. These are the sweat glands that secrete the, the very liquidy substance of the surface of your skin when you're hot, when you're sweating, or to the palms of your hands when you're nervous. Um, th these are the more common types of sweat glands we have. They're referred to, again, as the merocrine sweat glands. There's a second type of sweat gland. And they're present in this field of view. There are a lot of them here. And the second type of sweat gland, all of this here, should be distinctly different due to the really large lumen. So this white empty space here, this is the lumen. This is, this is the, the space where the, the sweat, or the contents are going to be um, secreted into and eventually transported out via a duct. And so the second type of sweat gland, the one that has a really large lumen, these are going to be found in slides that are specifically labeled axillary slides. And, and, and that referred to as the region kind of under your pits, right, your armpits. They're also found in the groin region. And so these sweat glands are, are different. They're not found over the body. They're found in very specific regions, armpits, groin regions, and these eventually secrete into hair follicles. These are the ones that, that contain proteins and nutrients that bacteria feed on, and these are the ones that will give us the body odor. Um, and so these are the, the sweat glands that produce the compounds that actually nourish some bacteria that contribute to body odor in particular. So we find these only localized to, like, in the groin region and, and the axillary regions. But it's the large, large lumen that really points um, these out compared to the ones we saw earlier, which had a much, much, much smaller lumen, um, if at all. These are called apocrine sweat glands, whereas the other ones were merocrine sweat glands. And the final slide here, th this is going to show a few things. The, the Really, I think the prominent thing here, you can see these big kind of fluffy, almost foamy looking cells. And all of these seem to drain, this is a really good example, drain into this big open space. These are another type of gland. These are the sebaceous glands. We learned about these in lecture. These are the oil producing glands. And sebaceous glands, they're the ones that use the holocrine secretion method, the whole cell ruptures. And you can see here that they secrete into hair follicles. And this, this region here, this is a hair follicle. This is where hair, which would be right here, grows out of. And so sebaceous glands help lubricate and, 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 and um, kind of moisten the, the hair follicles. Therefore, the last thing that we see here that you need to know would be the accessory feature is the hair. And so here's a hair. The follicle is the, the dip in the tissue. 
Um, the root of the hair is the part of the hair below the surface. And sometimes you can see the shaft, which is the, which is the part above the surface. 